I'm not like thirsty to be in a relationship. But even though you're not thirsty, you still kind of got to like put yourself in a position to be found, I guess you could say, For right? For sure. And and honestly, in my community, in my discipleship and people that I trust and people who are married that I talk to about this all the time, I ask them about that. I'm like, I have to be found. So where do I go? Like, how do I? But like, I'm out there. Are like, you? I mean, I'm saying like, you can find, you can, I'm so, on the so, internet. So, so like, the you internet's can see probably me. like the best way to. Like, I mean, it's like, I'm out there. Like, if you're really looking to talk to me, it's not like you got to wait to see. I'm not going to be in a club. I'm just, because I just feel like my, like how I feel about the Lord, like, and I get criticized for it all the time. And I, I'm, I'm okay with the criticism. People think that I'm too serious, but like what he saved me from was serious, mm. period. But would you say that it is possible to be serious mm -hmm. about God and maybe find yourself in a club or two? I think it is, a club, personally. A club, probably not. Really? A club, probably not. Because then, because it's like, what are you doing? Are, are you listening to music that glorifies the Lord? No. Are you drinking? And and what are you, like, and I'm not saying drinking is bad. I'm not, the Bible says drink, just don't get drunk. So, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I'm not saying drinking is bad either. But I'm saying, like, that environment, your environment does matter. It does. It, it matters. The environment matters. Like, I believe that I don't, I would not put, like, okay, a club, maybe not. A lounge? <laughs> I'm not going to be in a club. So the question of the day is, what does fun look like for someone who believes in Jesus? Am I partying? Am I not partying? Am I drinking? Am I not drinking? Am I having too much fun? Am I wilding? These are things that I've been trying to figure out lately. And that's why we had the podcast, so we can figure it out together. And I was so grateful to be able to have this conversation with Megan Ashley, who's a believer in Christ, a mother, and the host of the In Totality podcast, which has helped thousands of people across the world figure out life. How's life for you right now? Life is life is good. Life is busy, but yeah. it's good. But busy's good. Yeah. Busy's good. Yeah. So on your podcast, In Totally, you talk about how you're wholly, totally, totally dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. Would you say, as somebody who's dedicated to God, that you consider that to be something that is enjoyable and fun? Um, I think that, you know, having an intimacy with the Lord and, like, really deciding to give him my life in totality, I think that it's changed my perspective on what fun looks like. Mm, um, okay. You know, what fun looked like when I was in the world is not what fun looks like now. Um so my heart is just in a place where it's postured to just do what is pleasing to the Lord. And I enjoy pleasing him. So, okay. So if you were to describe, if you were to describe what brings you joy right now, what would you say? Um, you know, spending time with people, we were talking about this on the way here. I think it's really the people that I'm surrounding myself with. Mm. And so it's not so much what we're doing, but it's the who I'm doing it with. Um, I really enjoy the people that God has placed in my life and like my core people. And um, so it can be anything as long as they're involved. I'm having a great time. So that's a good answer. And honestly, I, I, I was like kind of doing some reflection on the question myself, like what does bring me fun? And it's like, yeah, going to clubs and stuff, maybe what you end up doing or what the world ends up doing or mm -hmm. maybe um, going to parties or whatever. But it's really the people that you're with. Like nobody yeah. cares to. um you know, be at a table if or, or anything like that if the, the right people aren't there. Like, yeah. to be honest, like, I'm tired of hearing, like, I used to wait for times like this to rhyme. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's like parties aren't, it's not the party that's the fun, it's the it's yeah. the people that you're around. Yeah, I think that's really what it's about. So then I would say I think a majority of people would look at being a Christian as something that's somewhat, like, boring, though, right? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think because we are used to, when you're in the world, you adapt to what, the world says it's fun. Mm. And when you get into an intimacy and a relationship with the Lord, it's very different. And so you're go you're fighting your flesh. And I think that that can be hard, you know, to, you know, have desires that you have become accustomed to in the world. And now you have to kill those desires. So it may not look, it's hard, it's challenging. And that doesn't seem fun for our flesh. Um, so I think that that's just, so then if somebody were listening and being like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but um, dang, I still like feel like if I were to choose this Christian life, my life would go down. How mm -hmm. would you explain to them that their life will go down in like fun, go down in excitement? How would you explain to somebody that choosing this path of mm -hmm. being a Christian is a more better path for a better life? Like how, what would you use to kind of like 
maybe convince that person? Because I think um, I'm big on praying for a heart that wants to do what's pleasing for the Lord. Mm. And I think that we have to, you know, our the Bible says that our heart is wicked. It says that our heart is are deceitful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that we have to first pray and be first be honest. You know, God, I want to have a relationship with you and it's and I still want to do these other things. They're just being honest. So give me a heart that wants to do what's pleasing to you. And I think when you really know the Lord and you start to learn him and you start to have a relationship with him, you fall in love with him. And just like we love people, we want to do what's pleasing to them. Like when you're in a relationship with somebody, you love them. So you what what's fun for them ends up becoming fun to you because you love them. And so once we fall in love with the Lord, I think his ways we start to love mm. and we start to want to do what's pleasing to him. So those things that we did in the world just don't do it for us anymore because we know it disappoints the one that we love. So then do you feel restricted with like um, the do's and don'ts of being a Christian? Like don't have sex until marriage. Don't. Um I don't, some people feel like you shouldn't be drinking, shouldn't, mm-hmm. shouldn't be smoking. Do you feel restricted by, like, oh, did, like, because for me, I've had moments where, like, I've overthought it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where I'm like, man, like, it almost feels, like, constraining. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where I can't live life free anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Have you kind of wrestled, wrestled with that, too? or? I think that true freedom is in Christ. Okay. So I think that our idea of what freedom is, if it's opposite of what Christ says is freedom, then it's not freedom. Right. I think that the Lord's boundaries are his love for us. You know what I mean? He puts boundaries in place because he loves us. I'm a parent. I'm a mom. And I have boundaries for my children and not to keep them from good things, but to keep them safe. And, you know, the Bible says that the Lord withholds no good thing from us. So if there's a boundary, it's for our good. You know, so I think that Yes, I I, I believe the Bible says to consider him in all of our ways. So I consider him in every single thing that I do, from the way that I dress, from the way that I have pleasures and enjoyments, I consider the Lord. I think for me sometimes, um, when when living life and trying to, like, be free, even knowing that, all right, yeah, um, these guardrails that God Mm -hmm. has put in place are built so that, with with good intentions, Mm -hmm. those guardrails are set with good intentions, it still sometimes feels like when you're, Thinking about the guardrails themselves, it's like you can't run as fast as you would like, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Have you felt like that before? I, I mean, I think that I experienced it in the sense of like not my, when my heart was far from the Lord. Mm. I think it was just more of an indication that my heart just wasn't close to him. Because mm. as I've gone on this journey in the last year of really like dedicating my life to Christ fully, I don't have desires that I used to have anymore. I just don't have those desires. My desires are to please him. And so I don't find it, you know, some things are still a challenge, um, but my my heart and my the posture of my heart is to please him first. Like from the outside looking in, I feel mm-hmm. like you might look at a lot of Christians and feel like they're, they're not in, like in, a, in a place of peace where yeah. like um, life isn't as, enjoyable for them to mm-hmm. be honest you know what I mean and like I think sometimes you hear I don't know it just seems like there's a lot of like rigidity w- with a lot of Christians if, if that makes any sense yeah. you know what I mean I think I think people if you're struggling like it's completely normal right because we're fighting against our flesh all the time um but I think that it might be an indication of some things that you're holding on to that you don't need to hold on to which is why you're not experiencing freedom in Christ because you're trying to still hold on to the things of the world. And I think surrendering and letting go, you might experience more freedom in Christ if you just let go of the things of the world because he doesn't want, he, he's not interested in, in having a relationship with you while you're having a relationship with the world. He's actually not interested in it. Mm. He actually doesn't require it. So if I say that I love God, I say that I love the Lord, I wanna be a Christian, I identify as a Christian, the Bible says if you love me, then you obey my commandments. So I can't say that I love him and I don't obey him. It's just really that simple. And I understand that we also are, we live in America. American Christianity is watered down. It's, you can have the world and Christ, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says it's him above everything. So then what would you consider the world? Like if you had to like say, so, so cause I know like when we say the world as Christians, it, it makes sense, but how, how would you describe the world to like somebody who 
may not know what that means. I think anything that is pulling you away from Christ, you know what I mean? Mm. Making like there are just there's a way that we live in this world you know the bible says to be in the world but not of the world right yeah so there's this this life that we live that is just about us it's about what we enjoy it's about what we want it's about our goals our will but christ says that we should be after his will seek ye first the kingdom of god and everything else will be added unto you if i be lifted up i will draw all men to me like that's what the bible it says to deny ourselves right to crucify our flesh it's all about surrendering right and sacrificing that's that's what christianity is but the world says put you first live your best life do what serves you think about you first it's all about us 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 but christ said he didn't come to serve be served but to serve right i think that's kind of what it is though that's what you you help me figure this out a little more so like when we say like we're denying ourselves i think that's where that's what i'm wrestling with now because Mm -hmm. When I hear what you're saying, although you may be denying your flesh's needs, it doesn't sound like you're doing things that you don't want to do. Because mm-hmm. although like you're denying your flesh, there's still a part of you that is not that actually wants to do what God wants to do yeah. now. So you're not because deni- I love them, right? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I love them, and I and I, I I compare it to any relationship. Like when I was in the world, and or like just it, with people when they date, right? Because firstly for women. Like when we fall in love with a guy, we end up loving his same basketball team, his same football team. And you may not even be interested, but because he loves it and you love him, that becomes your team now. That becomes your favorite restaurant. That becomes your favorite place to go on vacation. Yeah. Right? So I, I, I take that same energy and why would I not give that to the Lord plus some, plus more? You know what I mean? No, 100%. Okay, so then, all right, so you, you've talked about how you've, um, you're, you're learning to, like, um, accept who you are yeah so like would you say like what would what would you say you meant by that exactly i think that i you know i think i got to a place where i know the lord called me to do something specifically yeah. and um that means that there are a lot of sacrifices that come with that um there are you know there's just sacrifices that come with that and so I think I just got to a place where I just want to please him. And so that means accepting who he called me to be. So then who did he call you? Do you feel like you know who you are? I feel like the more that I have intimacy with the Lord, the more I know who I am in him. Okay. So like, um, would you, so like, you know how like people say like, you should know who you are. Mm -hmm. What's your, what's your perspective on that? Like, do you feel like people should know who they are and, and, and yeah. it's an interesting thing you know what yeah. i mean like do you like how would you describe the whole knowing who you are thing i think we to know who we are we have to know who created us okay you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like how do you how do you know who you are if you don't know the one that created you it's like he is the he is the creator we are the creation mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i i have to go to the one that created me to know what this creation is Okay. You so, know. So in the process of knowing who you so so how okay, so you say you know who you are now. Mm. What would you describe as knowing who you are? Um I I think knowing who you are, like I said, is knowing who created you. And, and it's just that simple. It literally is just that simple because it's like how do I know how to you know function your PS5? Mhm. How do you know how to do that? You read the manual. Right. That's how you know all the functions of that particular thing, right? So to know the functions of a creation, you have to know the manual. You have to be in the mind of the maker, right? And so to know who I am, I have to know my word mm. because that is the manual from the one who created me. And then, but so then there's still like the individuality of us too, right? Mm-hmm. So like um, you have personality types where people are outgoing, people mm-hmm. who are um, more um, reserved, mm-hmm. and when trying to fill out who you should be yeah and also wrestling with like what we can and can't do Mm -hmm. i think sometimes it can be hard to figure out who you are you know what i mean like for me i've kind of struggled with like just and this is kind of what i'm getting at it's Mm -hmm. like being free and like wanting to do things and then not knowing if like those wants are right yeah can can almost make you not know who you are a little bit yeah you know what i mean i think i think that um I, I, the beauty of of 
God is that he gives us help. Mm. You know what I mean? His word is help. And then we also have the Holy Spirit to help us. So I think inviting the Lord into those conversations. I like I am I'm naturally introverted. Um, I know how to be extroverted if I have to be. I am I know how to communicate very well. So I have certain things about my personality. But then it's asking the Lord for wisdom to steward those parts of me that gives glory to him yeah. and that honors him. I think for me, what made it a little hard was um, feeling like I figured out who I am in the world mm -hmm. and then putting the Christian hat on and wondering, wait, can I still be this type of guy mm -hmm. in this space? And I think I'm figuring it out now, yeah. but it was a wrestle for a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's natural. I think that that's natural. But yeah. I think that that also puts you in this beautiful position to depend on the Lord. Mm. Like he wants us to, he wants us to depend on him. Right. He, he's not asking us to figure it out on ourselves. I think that we'd put a lot of more pressure, like so much pressure on ourselves to figure it out all on our own when really he's just asking for obedience, right? So obedience is our job. Outcome is the Lord's job. Like our, the outcome of it is not on us. So then with obedience, I know that, that you're big on obedience. Yeah. So um, how's that? How's being obedient going for you right now? It's listen. As long as I'm obedient, I'm at peace. <laughs> like I have, I have peace. I don't struggle in my. I used to struggle really bad with my mental health, and um, I just have freedom when they're when I'm obedient to the Lord. You know, so it's I recommend it. Ten out of ten. Would you say um, so? So there's like the whole thing with like people pleasing mm -hmm. and like um, feeling like you know, you're living for other people's thoughts. I know that you kind of said that you've gotten over that now. Mm -hmm. How, what did, what did you do to get over? Well, first, can you, how would you describe like what that experience was like when you were, when you were kind of over concerned with how other people felt about like you? Um, like what's an example? I think just like caring just too much about what people think about you. Yeah. Like I care if you, if you know, if you don't like me, why don't you like me? And, you know, and altering myself so to be liked you know, instead of caring more about what the Lord says about me and how he feels towards me um, and considering what he thinks about me more than what other people think about me. So then what gave you the freedom to do that? Like to feel like um, you're not, or do you still kind of wrestle with it? Um, I mean, I think it's natural to wrestle a little bit with it. I don't wrestle with it as much as I used to. Right. Um, I don't, I care to make sure that I'm being, uh, honorable with the Lord. I care that I'm an image bearer. So I care that people see me and see Christ. Like I, I'm mindful of that. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm not cons like looking at comments and being like, Oh my God, what are they saying? And I don't care like that. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. Cause people are people, yeah. right? And we're fickle. We'll love you one day. We'll hate you the next day. <laughs> yeah. We'll love you again the next day. We'll hate you again another day. It's like they're fickle. So the Lord is consistent. <laughs> and I would agree with that. And I think the more you like learn about God and how big he is and how fickle people are, it's yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, like you said, it just makes the caring about them less. Well, yeah. their, their perspective less. And being that they're no longer an idol, right? Something yeah. Something that like, you, you need a validation from because yeah. you are validated from God. Yeah. I don't have a fear of people as much as I used to. I, I fear that's the real, Lord more yeah. than I fear people. Um, so I think that that was a big turning point is really having like praying and having a heart that really like has a reverence for the Lord. And in that, my fear of people decrease. It's just, it's crazy because I think, um, when you get to this point, cause I, what you're describing, I align with like, when mm -hmm. you get to this place of like, what, like just kind of like being a whole is mm -hmm. how I describe or being at peace. It's just I feel like it's it's a it's a it's a great place to be, but it's a hard place to explain mm -hmm. who, for someone who hasn't been there. But it, it's and it's almost like a like the like a, a secret that's kept amongst Christians yeah. that I think needs to be better marketed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel like if people n could uh, better understand what this life really means when you kind of like tap in, mm -hmm. it it's something that more people would sign up for. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's community. I think that we mm. lack community. We lack discipleship. We don't have a whole lot of people that are really discipling people, like which is what the Lord called us to do. Go make disciples. <laughs> that, that's one of the first things. He's go make disciples. And, and, you, so, and you look at go make disciples as like just be in community. Yeah, being in a community. I mean, community is part of discipleship too. I think there's different um, aspects of discipleship. Right. But I think community is really important. And having a very solid community in my life right now has allowed me to be even more bold in my faith 
Do you think making friends as an adult is something that, like, how are you going about that? Because a lot of people right now it's are hard. kind of struggling with. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, especially as a, as a, as a Christian. But I think, um, I mean, it's just hard in general. But as a Christian, you have help because you have the Holy Spirit to give you discernment and wisdom. Like, the Bible says that the Lord gives us wisdom generously, right? So I think asking for wisdom and asking for discernment, like, who should I be friends with? Who should I be in a relationship with, you know? Yeah, no, like, I do think, it's, it's crazy, like, when you hear people talk about it, but a, a lot of people are struggling with, like, finding community. Now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it does seem like it's just, it's, it's probably the number one thing I hear now. Yeah, I, I get that a lot, that people who are trying to pursue the Lord are having a hard time finding community, which is one of the reasons why I'm really invested into my Patreon community, because people are finding each other, and they're finding their people yeah. in that group that um, that we have with Patreon. And so there are lifelong friendships that have been made within my Patreon group. And I just love that they're finding each other. They're finding their communities. They're texting with each other. They're sending scriptures. They're doing Bible studies together. Like it's been life changing for a lot of them. And so I think um, community is just a big thing. Would you say the majority of your friends are people that you've known for like a long time? No, I have really? two. I have two friends that I am that have known me for fourteen years plus. Okay, two of my best friends, and um, they've seen me in like every season of my life, um, and they mean the world to me. Um, and then I have Jay and Jordan, who I've known for five years almost, and well, probably over five years, and they are the closest people to me. Um, they know everything about like, and we're all on this journey together, like really giving Christ our life fully. And so it's really dope to have them. And then, um, yeah, and the Lord has brought some really dope people into my life. Um, you know, Jackie and Preston are amazing and we've been able to, um, you know, they are part of my community and I love them. And just having Christ in the center of my relationships now have been like a really big game changer. So. Okay, and you're saying you use the sermon too. Like, so if you meet people, you kind of like, try to feel yeah I think like I think we should just include the Lord in everything like I don't think there's one part of our lives that he doesn't want to be included into yeah even our friendships yeah you and know I know, I know like a lot of people when they hear that they think well then how do you know who um if it's got who if it's God talking if it's you talking how do you know because God is never going to contradict his word mm. okay well, explain That's what it, you mean by that exactly. he's never going to go against his word so if I need to know hmm is this my thought is this the Lord's? Is this the enemy? I know it's God because he will never contradict himself. Yeah. He's consistent. You know, his word is his word. And so if it aligns with his word, then I know it's him. Okay. No, yeah, I would say that I would agree with that too. And, and I think you also get to learn God's voice with time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like but after a while, you kind of realize, okay. The, and maybe it's not even God's voice, but it's mm -hmm. like because you've been in God's word so much, you're almost yeah. aligned in, the, in like, yeah. oh, well, this is. Maybe like the best decision yeah. here. This is probably not the best decision here. Yeah, and if you want to know God's voice, know his word. Right. Like he puts his word, like nothing is above his word. Like he lo like he means what he says. And so if you want to know, man, is this God talking to me? Like look in his word. So you were you were married super young. Yeah, 20. At 20. Yeah. Uh, so um, would you recommend get, being married young? Like if like let's say your kids were like, mom. I'm 20. I, I, I found my. I probably person. would not agree with that. I, I mean, but it also depends. You know what I mean? Okay. I think um, I have seen people who have healthy communities who get married young, but they have healthy community that helps them that have been successful in marriage. Um, I think that uh, maturity is a thing. So we're not that mature at 20 years old. Right. Um, I think that having healthy community, having discipleship, like all of those things, if you have all those things in, in as your structure, then like, I think it'll be fine. But I think just maturity, community, discipleship, knowing God's word, I think that's really important. So, okay, and I, I would agree with that. So, and, and, and so it's not like it's, it's not doable to be married. Yeah, now, but it's, it's like, not that it's not doable. But it's, the chances of it, of you being in the right headspace at that time is kind of not high. Yeah, I would take your time. You know, take your time. And what would you say is like a lesson you like? Because now, so you're you're now divorced, mm -hmm. and you're um, are you dating right now? No, <laughs> I don't have anyone to date. But is, but does that mean you're like not even open to it? You're like I'm. No, I'm myself. open to it. I'm open to it. If the Lord brings the right person, I'm 
open to it. Absolutely. I just think that the type of person that I am is not like the best billboard for dating. The, say it again. <laughs> the type of person that I am is not like, you know, it's not. I think people see me and or, and hear my content and hear the way that I speak. I'm very serious about my relationship with God. And so for a lot of people, um, it would take a very specific type of man and a specific type of strength to be able to cover a woman like me, I think. Really? Yeah. Because I, I mean, but I would say that's what a majority of men want, even though like, you know, we, it may not be as publicly advertised. I do think like when it comes to like who a, a guy would marry, mm -hmm. they are looking for like a woman of God though. Like, I think so. I think that, that I think that I think you would have to be a man of God though to really know mm. how to, you know, love and cover a woman of God. Like so, you have to know, you have to have your own relationship with the Lord. So then how would you describe like that coverings? Like how would you describe it? I think that it's really important for men. Like a marriage is, is serious, you know what I mean? And, and it's supposed to be a reflection of Christ and his church. Right. And so I think that if we're not going into it with that intent, like I am, I want this marriage to represent Christ's love for his church. If we're just going into it so that we can have some cool pictures and be couple goals, then you know what I mean? Like it feels like people go into it more for that. It, they're, it's more selfish. It's like, I want to be, I want to have somebody to sleep next to at night. Or, you know, even for like people who are Christians, you know, you just want to have sex. Like, like just keep it a book. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I want to have sex and not feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, you know, I want to have this family. I want to have this legacy. I, I, I. Um, but I think after being married and being in the season that I'm in right now, I, I wouldn't go into it as selfishly as I probably did when I was 20 years old. Yeah, and I, um, I heard somebody describe it, which made sense to me, like where um, if the man is, I guess, submitted to God, then it makes, it's like you're, then you're following like a, somebody who's yeah being led in the right direction, I guess yeah. you could say. And if he's not, yeah. then it's like, where are you being led to? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I don't I want you, like, where are we going? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And too, I think, like, if you want to know if a man really wants to know a woman, then he has to know the Lord because the Lord is who created that woman. God, like God created her. And so if you want to know her and love her and know how to respond to her and know how to, you know, know her heart, like you have to know the Lord. He's the one that has to guide you to that. So, so I would say like um, you probably have learned a lot when you from your marriage. Yeah. What are what would you say are like things would you say there's things that you didn't know to look for then that you're looking for now? Oh yeah. What, for sure. What are some of those things? Um I think I think, you know, can like consistency in a relationship with God is really important. Like okay. how are you submitted to the Lord and what does that look like? Um I think that's the biggest thing. It's just the relationship that that person has with God mm. because their their level of commitment to the Lord is an indication of what their level of commitment will be to you. So then let me it's a covenant, let, so let know. me know if I'm going to like if touching zones you don't want to talk no, about. No. But um would you say then that your previous husband wasn't like locked in with God like that? Um I don't I, I don't think that neither one of us were really like mm. as intentional with our relationship with the Lord. We're young, we're young parents. You know, we had a child with special needs, so a lot of our attention was on our children. Mm. You know what I mean? We had kids. I was pregnant with my our oldest son before we got married. So we, we came into our marriage being parents. And so our focus was on our children. And I don't think, you know, I think we raised some amazing kids. Um, but I think that because we didn't include the Lord in our relationship from the jump, um, we were just on this spiral of just trying to keep our head above water. We're mm. young, we're parents, we're newly married, we're just trying to make sure these kids survive. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't, I can't, I don't want to be like condemning his relationship with the Lord. I think we both didn't have the Lord at the center of our marriage. Mm. So. Mm. so then would you say that's part, maybe the reason why you guys got divorced or like, was it just maybe the fact that you guys grew apart due to, like, what you just said of, like, focusing on? Yeah, I think, you know, I think that the Lord just wasn't in the center of it. Mm. And so when the three strand is there, then it's not easily broken. But when the 
you when too. that third strand is not there, then it's easily pulled apart. So you recently kind of like started taking this relationship with God serious then? I mean, I've always had some sort of presence, like the Lord had always had a certain type of presence in my life. But the reason why I named my podcast in totality is because last year the Lord said, I am requiring all of you in this season and forevermore. You, in previous seasons, I've had parts of you, but now I'm requiring all of you. There is no more one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. In order for, you know, your life to be what I intended to be, I'm going to have to have all of you. And so this is the first time in my life where I fully have given all of me to the Lord. And what do you think has changed from doing that? Everything. Everything has changed. I battled really bad with um, depression. I was diagnosed in uh, 2019 with bipolar depression. I was suicidal, all of those things. And I had my mind literally has been radically renewed and I have not had depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, any of those things since fully giving my life to the Lord. And what do you think about giving your life to the Lord help do that? What do you mean? So like, cause you just talked about like some deep stuff, like, mm -hmm. like suicidal thoughts, mental health, like diagnoses. Mm -hmm. These are real deep things. Would you say it's just like knowing you're loved by God that like that? Cause not to, to say I'm not dealing with that mm -hmm. is huge. You know Major. what I mean? So like, Major. What? I think it's the obedience. Do you know what I mean? Like knowing God's word and knowing how to combat some of these negative thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Like the Bible says, think on things that are lovely, things that are pure, right? Things that are true. And so putting those things into practice, being obedient, seeking the Lord every single day, like making intentional time to spend with him, filling my mind up with his word, filling my day up with his presence. Mm. It does, I don't have room for anything else because I'm full. You know what I'm saying? What's a negative thought that you had that you think um, was like combated by a God thought? Like, what's a negative thought that you had that, you, yeah. I think uh, just not feeling worthy. I think that was like the biggest thing. Like, I don't think I felt like the Lord actually loved me because I have done so many things to disqualify myself from his love. Um, but the word says that once we're in Christ, we're new creatures. Old things are passed away. Behold, things are new. And so I think that the enemy wanted me to believe that I had disqualified myself from God's love. But the word says also that when we go to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness, he's faithful to forgive and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so those that was the truth. The facts are I have done tons of things in my life that are sinful, unrighteous, all those things. But the truth is is that when I came to him and I asked for forgiveness, he was faithful to forgive me. Wow, so the, so it's the, it's the forgiveness that you think that gave you like that sense of knowing your worth. Yeah, like look at the cross, how yeah. could you not? Like yeah. when I look at the cross, like he did that for me. He did that and, and he says, it, you know, when I'm in him, I'm new. And so I don't have to hold on to these things because he, I don't have to hold on to shame because he put shame to death on the cross. So, and you, so you probably, so like, I'm sure you probably knew that to some degree for a long time. Yeah. What made it stick? I didn't believe it. I think, I think I just didn't, but I think, and two, I feel like the Lord had brought me to a place of like, um, I don't want to say like a, I was in a low place last year and um, just a really broken place. And the way that he comforted me in that place, like he didn't condemn me. I didn't feel condemned by him. I felt loved by him at mm -hmm. my worst. And that type of love that I encountered drew me closer and closer to him. Mm -hmm. And I started to know more and more that he loved me. And I started to see how consistent he was. You know what I mean? By Through getting healed from that brokenness. Yeah, reading his word, like all of that was healing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I just. Well, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, let me know. But what, 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 why were you so broke? Was that the divorce or? I, yeah, I came to a place of, um, I was newly single. Um, there were a lot of things just changing in my life. And I think, you know, I talked about this, I've talked about this before, but I think I went into that season with arrogance and pride and thinking like, oh, this is, you know, I'm divorced now. It's about to be a new season. It's going to be my best season. Is that arrogance though? That's just you know, optimism, right? No, it was arrogance. It was arrogance. It was prideful because I didn't seek the Lord. 
I didn't mm. say, Lord, what are you bringing me into? What do you need for me in this season? What do you, I didn't seek him at all. I just went into this season like, oh, I got it. Oh, you it. got this. I got okay, it. Okay, yeah, I see what you're You know saying what I'm that, saying? Yeah. And that's arrogance and pride. And so um, when when the things were transpiring in my life and I felt like I hit kind of like a rock, like I had gotten into this new space right. physically, but I still was so broken. You know, I still was so sad. I still was so hurt and offended and resentful and, you know, had re like revengeful. I was all of those things. And I, I encountered the Lord and he didn't condemn me. You know what I mean? He was like, look, I need all of you in this season. And if you're ready to give me all of you, I will radically change your life. And he did. I don't even know if this is like a, the right question, but was the, was the divorce like a mutual decision or was it like, um, I don't even know if that's like a divorce question, but yeah, uh, I think I, I just think that we both were at a place where we just were not like this isn't healthy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think that he probably, you know, I know that he has a, a his own reasons for how he feels, and I don't want to speak for him right, because yeah. that's his thing. But I just think that we were in a place where it just wasn't healthy anymore, and we have children, and I want them to be, I want them to see their parents healthy. You know? that, I feel you on that for sure. Yeah. So then how would you describe the, the streets now? Like if you had to like this, describe the dating scene right now. I don't like, know. I'm not dating. So I mean, not you, I'm open to though. it, but there's nobody at, like I said, no one's looking to date me right now. Why would you say that? Because that's the truth. I don't know. That's the truth. Nobody's like looking to date me. Are you, so you're, you're probably like just indoors then. That's why you're saying that. Like you're not really going out like that. Cause I mean, like, I'm sure. I don't. You know, if you like was like, like outside, it's not going to be like that. Yeah, maybe. I'm not outside, so. That's what we're yeah, I'm so, not But outside. you can't say nobody's. Yeah. I mean, nobody's. Nobody's trying to date me. That's crazy. And I don't. That's a too, crazy statement. I think. I think too. <laughs> I think I'm also like I was married for a really long time, right. so I don't really know the cues and the you know like those social like when somebody throws something out there. My friends make fun of me all the time because I'm super naive. I'm right. like, oh, yeah, they just want to be my friend. They're like, they <laughs> don't want to be your friend, bro. Um, so I think that that's just something that I have to navigate towards or navigate through. I don't know. It's just but you're weird. Not, it sounds know. like you're not pressed, though. Like, you're kind of like. I'm, I'm not, not really, because yeah. I really don't. If the Lord wants me to be in a relationship, he'll make it happen. I desire it. I would love to be married again. I think because I know that I would really want a marriage that glorifies the Lord. So, like, that excites me. Well, um, well, do you feel like you're positioning yourself to be in another relationship, though? I'm positioning myself to be... Uh, because I'm being obedient to the Lord, I think it positions me to be a good wife one day. Of course. Um, but, like, I'm not, like, thirsty to be in a relationship. But even though you're not thirsty, you still kind of got to, like put yourself in a position to be found, I guess you could say, For right? For sure, and and honestly, in my community, in my discipleship, and people that I trust, and people who are married that I talk to about this all the time, I ask them about that. I'm like, I have to be found, so where do I go? Like, how do I, but like, I'm out there. Are like, you? I mean, I'm saying like, you can find, you can, I'm so, on the so, internet. So, so like, the you internet's can see probably me. like the best way to. Like, I mean, it's like, I'm out there. Like, if you're really looking to talk to me, it's not like you got to wait to say, I'm not going to be in a club. I'm not going to be. And this, but so this is what it, really kind of what I wanted to get into too, because I think, especially when you're single, being a Christian who's single and also like trying to find somebody. Yeah. It's, it's like, should you be in the club? No. No. no, I mean, I don't think so. Cause like, what am I doing there? There's what am other I Christians doing? There, though. I mean, I mean, but like, n probably not the type of person that I would want to be with. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Like, I, I, I just <laughs> because I just feel like my like how I feel about the Lord, like, and I get criticized for it all the time, and I am I'm okay with the criticism. People think that I'm too serious, but like what he saved me from was serious mm. period so my level of dedication and obedience to him is going to be serious because i know what he saved me from now if the lord hasn't saved you from something that's deep then cool maybe your relationship with him is not that deep but i know what the cross was i know what he went through and i know what he saved me from and so my relationship with the lord is very serious now that doesn't mean that everything that comes out of my mouth is thus saith the lord right yeah but my, that is my focus. My goal and my gaze is on him. 
but would you say you could and that is I think a, like that is a great perspective to have and I and I align with that but would you say that it is possible to be serious mm -hmm. about God and maybe find yourself in a club or two I think it is a club, personally a club probably not really a club probably not because then because it's like what are you doing are, are you listening to music that glorifies the Lord? No. Are you drinking? And and what are you like? And I'm not saying drinking is bad. I'm not. The Bible says drink, just don't get drunk. So, mm -hmm. Right. So like, I'm not saying drinking is bad either, but I'm saying like that environment, your environment does matter. It does. It, it matters. The environment matters. Like, I believe that I don't, I would not put like, okay. A club, maybe not. A lounge. <laughs> I'm not going to be in a club. I just, I, and even when I was in the world, I wasn't that type so of girl anyway. Girl, it, it, I'm one, not One of your best friends is like, yo, Megan, birthday party. I mean, we over here at XYZ. Probably not coming. And, really? I'm, not, and, and, and I'm not trying to be like super holy or nothing. I wasn't like that in the world. Oh, I'm okay, not interested. Okay. I'm not that type oh, of girl. You can say you're intro, in, intro. Yeah, I'm not person. like, it's like, what are we doing? I'm watching a bunch of people like, are y'all having, I don't even know if y'all are having fun. Right. I mean, yeah, you know what right. I mean? It's like everybody, it's not like people dance anymore. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like everyone is kind of just like standing up on couches yeah. and like wanting to be ego. seen. Yeah, it's, it's like, of, I it's, don't. It's, it's nasty. It's not nothing to be look, look, look up to. I, I do see yeah, what you're Yeah, just like, and I'm 34. I mean, I'm a grown woman with children. Like mm. I'm not 25 years old. Right, right, right. Now, if you want to go to a nice... When you play like that, that's real. Yeah, I'm like, I'm grown. Right. I'm not 26. Right. But if we want to go to like a nice lounge, live music, something chill, cool. So like, you just, you're on grown woman activity. Yeah, I'm grown. But I just don't want somebody who's not like, maybe like who's 22 or something to be like, dang, yeah, I can't even hit the club. I'm Christian now. I mean, I think that if if you're if you have a relationship with the Lord and you, I, and I'm not like I'm not even trying to big up clubs. I like yeah. you know, I said like who wants to be in a club just yeah. all the time? It's not like it's super fun or anything right. like that. But at the same time, I think that have fun. You gotta yeah, yeah. have fun, but you, but make sure that your heart has a desire to do the things that are pleasing to Him first. Right. I'm not looking to have fun first. I'm looking to please the Lord first in all of my ways. And I, but I'd even argue that like us enjoying life is pleasing God. So I've been reading this book um, called Life Backwards. And for me, it's probably like the biggest, it's probably the best book I've read. I'm only like halfway through it in the last, um, like I would say five years. And basically it touches on how like, so in Ecclesiastes, um, uh, Solomon, mm -hmm. I think talks about how like he had everything. He mm -hmm. had all the girls, not all, wives. Mm -hmm. He had all, all the money, like he was king. And he, he described it all as like vanity, like mm -hmm. meaningless. And um, the book talks about how when you look at life backwards and you, you look at it from the perspective of at the end of the day, we all die. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, these nothing can, there's nothing to gain from life. Mm -hmm. You can tr switch your perspective to instead of looking at life as there's much to gain, you just have to look at life as it's a gift. Yeah. And for me, looking at life as a gift then changes your perspective to it's something to be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, just knowing that, I'd almost say like enjoying yourself is something that um, is godly. Yeah, but, but where is the where is those where are those desires coming from? What and, what do you find enjoyment? And and so to be honest, like although like I'm like I may sound like I'm bigging up clubs right now, I, I align with what you're saying. I yeah. think the best fun that I have is um, being around quality people. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. I yeah. think like I think that's really what like is like the the best part of like experiencing yeah. it. So I agree with you on that. Yeah. But I just don't, I just feel like sometimes like people turn Christian and feel like they have to like buy a sweater and like go indoors and, and not, and that's just not the case. And I feel like it doesn't market Christianity well, you know yeah. what I mean? Because people just think it's some type of boring thing where you just turn gray. Yeah. Which is not the case. No, it's like not. Like, you're being true to yourself. You, yeah. You genuinely, it's not like you have a desire to be partying and you're, like, not doing that. You literally are like, I don't even want to do that. Yeah, I don't have a desire for exactly. it. Exactly. Like, I literally, like I said, too, I think community is really important. I think the problem is, is that we're lacking community in our Christian. Yeah. In, in, That's fact. As Christians, we're lacking community. And I think that because we we don't have community and we don't have discipleship, there's a lot of compromise that comes into that. So now we're just conforming to the wor world of things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, you love the Lord, I love the Lord, let's be in a community and let's do things together that's pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. And in that, we have a great time. Mm -hmm. Like the greatest time I have is sitting out on a balcony somewhere, out, like outside, 
having maybe a nice glass of wine or something, having a great yeah. conversation. That is enjoyable to me. You know what I mean? You talked about how a lot of people today are like selfish mm -hmm. w with their perspective on being a Christian. What did mm -hmm. you mean by that? Um, maybe not so much as a Christian. I just think that that's just the, the cultural society that we live in. It's everything is about you. Do what's best for you. Live your best life. Don't do things that aren't serving to you. Um, put you first. You got to think about you. you. Like everything is you, 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 you. Um, and so as I continue to search the Lord in his word, I see so much of how that's opposite of what and how Christ calls us to live. No, 100%. So then what would you say, like, today mm -hmm. is, like, um, like, what about God do you love the most today? I, I, I think the thing that always is, like, wow to me about the Lord is how he's so kind. Mm. Like, he's just really kind and really patient. And his kindness and his patience are things that are, like, very obvious to me more so now than it used to be. And how do you experience that kind of like, what's like an example? Like, so like, I, okay, for example, I was going through like a really rough time. Um, this actually just happened just recently. It was like a couple weeks ago and, um, I was going through a really hard time and, um, uh, and I was taking my son to the dentist's office and, um, my middle son, Caleb, who has autism and fragile X syndrome, he can't just go to a regular dentist. He has to be put to sleep to go to the dentist. And so that in and of itself sometimes can be triggering for me. And I'm going through a rough time and I'm having one of the roughest weeks that I feel like I've had in a while. And um, I'm already frustrated because I have to put my son to sleep so that he can get his teeth cleaned. So that's frustrating to me as well. Um, and I'm, they're wheeling my son to the car um, and the nurse stops me and says, the Lord wanted me to tell you something. And he proceeds to give me a word that was very like specific and what I needed in that moment. And I got in the car and just cried because I was like, wow, God, that's so kind of you wow. that you put me on someone's heart who doesn't know me. I'm at the dentist's office, like with my son and you put me on his heart to encourage me in a time that I was like really sad. And so I just was like, wow, that's so kind of you. Yeah. Like you didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? Like he didn't, all the times that I've been so disloyal to the Lord and all the seasons of my life where I haven't put him first. And even though I'm in a season now where he has all of my obedience and all of my attention, he never, like he doesn't hold grudges. You know what I mean? Like how kind of you to do that. It was just kind. Um, so that's just one example of, no, I mean, and I feel crazy. like I experienced that. That's all the crazy time. though. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. So then, um, if you were to have to say like, so like, um, what was you know how like, every so often we have those like moments of like, aha, like, mm -hmm. oh wait, like, I, I'm I, my perspective is just changed now. Mm -hmm. what, what's the last moment you had like that? Like your last, like. I feel like the last thing probably was around that same time is that I my aha moment was spiritual discipline. I think I like really understood what spiritual discipline was like, um, how to fight spiritually. Like I, it was like a aha time. Um, I'm still kind of living in that and, and, you know, navigating through it. Um, but I think it was like, oh, okay, this is why you needed me to be so consistent so that when things happen, I have, I've all of those consistencies and being obedient, obedient prepared me for challenges so that I could still be disciplined even when my flesh is like wanting to rise up or wanting to, you know, so this, act out. So the aha moment was realizing that being spiritually disciplined ha like has to be consistent. It has to. Like it, it has, like your relationship with the Lord has to be an everyday thing. And I think that we've made it a Sunday morning thing. I think that we've made it a thing that we, that makes us it puts us in a position of looking away on social media so we'll throw out these like did my devotional mm -hmm. but it but did we do that because that's part of our life or we did that to look away to look like we're something to look like we're spiritually whatever I don't know um but it's it's he like it needs to be an everyday thing so what gave you like what made it click what made you because when, when I'm hearing that, I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you do got to be disciplined. But for you, what made it like an aha? What made it like? I didn't have a choice. Mm. I just didn't have a choice. Like, when the Lord said he needed me in totality, I, I believed him. And ever since I have been doing that and being consistent, I have peace. I can sleep at night. 
I don't have suicidal thoughts. I am not depressed. Even when things come up, I still experience challenges. I still experience levels of suffering, right? But I have peace in it now. Mm. I have strength to get through it now. And so that, that has come because of my intimacy and, and obedience in my walk with Christ. Yeah. No. So. And honestly, like, um, I think I love what you're describing as like where you're like at like this place that you're in. I yeah. think it, it just sounds like I, I, I align with it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think that I, I, w I would even argue that that's probably like getting others to feel what you're experiencing in their own ways, like yeah. why you're doing everything that you're doing. Yeah. Now. I want people to know that you can live a life of Christ and not compromise, that it is possible. You know what I mean? That that I I, I want to. I just believe that he, his word is true. He said when he is lifted up, he will draw all men to him. Not if we lift up ourselves, right? We have to lift him up. And so I want to do that in every way that I can. And, you know, American Christianity sees that and sees that it's too radical, but it's not. It's the bare minimum. It's the bare requirements that he has for us. And if I love him, I'm going to do what he says. And I don't care how radical that looks to other people. I don't care how that offends other people. Yeah. Because I will offend anyone before I offend the Lord. That's just where I'm at. I know what he saved me from. And it deserves all of my, my attention and all of my obedience. He deserves it. Even, even out, outside of you know, the recent encounters that I've had, like when he died on the cross, he deserves that from us, right? right? But even him being so kind to continue to rescue me out of some really hard things, um, yeah, I'm gonna give him all of me. 100%, 100%, I mean, I think we could even close out there. I just want people to know, like, I think just, I think you market Christianity well. I Thanks. think like if somebody were to meet you, I don't, I don't think you're, projecting when you say you're like you're you feel joy i don't think you're pre like yeah. you're lying i think you genuinely are at peace <laughs> yeah you genuinely feel good i think you yeah. like you're in a great space in life and i just i, I just want more people to know that like yeah. this is this is like there it's, it's not because uh, you know a lot of times you hear about people struggling as christians man god got me through that accident yeah. but it's like there's there's no there's an upside of where life just gets better yeah. you know what i mean and yeah, I, I think that, like, when we talk about even, like, American Christianity, I think part of the reason why um, it's maybe not, like, l something that people are running towards is just yeah. because it doesn't look appealing. Yeah. And I think... Yeah, the cross doesn't look appealing. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus, it, I don't think... He, he like, he, he, sw he cried and, and, and was dropping drops of blood. Like, he sweated drops of blood. Like, it wasn't appealing to him either, yet he still did it. And thank God he did. Because now we can freely go exactly, to the, to the exactly. Father. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yes, it's it, it, it it's a it's a call to die, and then live, so that you can live free. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think that I think part of the problem is too is that American pulpits now are promising you pro a prosperous life, instead of preparing you for suffering and preparing you to die and talking about the self-sacrificing that you're gonna have to do. Now all we do is talk about your next miracle, your next blessing, your next breakthrough, your next Bentley, your next millions, and show me in the Bible where that's what Christ was saying. He was calling us to serve others, to deny ourselves, to put others before ours. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, that is what we're called to do. So when you're living or when we are listening to all these messages about prosperity, but then that's not happening in real life, yeah, it doesn't look appealing anymore. But you can, even though you gotta suffer, um, as, like humans, every, mm -hmm. whether you're Christian or not, you're gonna suffer. Absolutely. There's still, it's not just suffering. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to say, add that, squeeze yeah. that into, but, but, um, but no. You're I'll suffering with the Lord, and so that's what makes a difference, because you're gonna suffer regardless. Exactly. And but suffer suffering with the Lord is better, makes is a, it way better 100%. than just suffering. Like I said, my life isn't peaches and cream all the time. I Nobody's struggle with is. things. I, I've, I still experience challenges, like real suffering, real challenges, yet I am able to have peace, though. Like yeah. that peace that surpasses all understanding, that peace that is there even when everything else is chaotic, even when things are hurt, hurting me or whatever, I have peace. Yeah. But I ha because I have the Lord, not just because, 
you know, I read some self-help book <laughs> or I, you know, whatever. Like, I'm able to navigate through s- challenges because I have the Lord. No, 100%. 100%. So. I heard somebody say, like, um, I don't know if it's true or not, but they were saying, like, happiness is, like, the, like when things happen. But joy is, some, joy is something that can be consistent. So, like, yeah. happiness may go up and down, but, like, that peace, that, like, yeah. that joy you're describing is something that can be consistent yeah. no matter, like, how life's going. Yeah, the Bible says he gives us eternal peace or eternal joy. And so that only comes from him. No, 100%. So. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank I, um, you. I'm inspired just by um, hearing you out and just knowing that there's some there's other people who are sharing the same experience. Because yeah. I, would, I would say the same thing. I, I am, like, joyous. Yeah. I'm at peace. Life's yeah. good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah, like, all right, well, God bless you. Thank you yeah. so much for pulling up, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, awesome. this is good. Yeah, thanks for having me.